Welcome to another playthrough of World of Horror. Or just welcome, if this is your first playthrough. Not like this is a sequential thing, so you can just hop in and hop out anytime. At the end of the previous playthrough, we unlocked a new backstory, and in between videos, I unlocked a new character. So we are once again going in with completely previously unseen items. Stuff that didn't exist before this new update. And I haven't seen it at all, so I'm going in completely blind. Now, I've had it on the multi-black palette in the last few videos, which is very elegant. I like it a lot. But just to switch things up a tiny bit, we will... This is standard. Uh, this is not a good display of it. There we go. Slightly grayish. Uh, we'll do Abyssal so that we have some real color to work with for once. Just mild accents. You can choose palettes that are almost blinding. I am not gonna do that to you. I'm not even gonna like scroll through all the palettes on video because even seeing them for a second can hurt your eyes. I know it does for me. Anyway, get right into it. I have misspoken in a previous video. I said Cultus was hard mode. Cultus is the equivalent of normal difficulty. Initiate is easy. Then we've got like a very easy thing. This is hard difficulty, true believer. And then Harbinger of Doom is an even harder difficulty. These two, very hard and very easy, were added in a patch at some point. Um, most of the time when you're playing through, you can play through on any difficulty and all the achievements will be available to you. A couple of achievements are difficulty specific and the challenges also determine their own difficulty that you can't choose. But overall, you will be fine playing on whatever difficulty you're comfortable with. Which is why I'm sticking with normal. Despite my better judgment, I should bump it down to easy. Because I'm playing as a brand new character, Ayaka Kuroi. This in the update is called The Witch. Uh, they didn't want to take part in Ayaka's ritual, now they're all dead. And their souls will continue to torment her. She starts with minus luck. You never really see that in a character. So that should be something. I know one thing about her gimmick, which is uh, how I unlock the character. You get five uh, curses at the same time, and that's how you unlock this character. So this character is built around curse gimmicks, which normally you try to avoid curses like the plague, because they are incurable and very, very dangerous. I believe this character wants curses. And additionally, this character has scars. I've made it through hell and back. You won't break me now. I hope she's right. Uh, lowers all incoming damage by one, drastically lowers maximum health and reason. And real quick, there is still a blank character space. Another character I haven't unlocked yet. And we are going to shoot for the stars in this video and try and unlock this character, as difficult as it is. This is an HP Lovecraft-inspired game, so the stars we're shooting for are infested with unspeakable horrors that Lovecraft himself was too poor of a writer to actually write any description of. So the poor developer of this game had to draw pictures of the things that were described as indescribable. Impressively enough. There's one now, Cthulhu. Look at that. Anyway, let us meet our old god. So, I've decided that we're going to play through the Ithotu campaign. This supposed cause of destruction of the Library of Alexandria, a perfect black marble statue, has recently been has been recently discovered and is currently waiting in the Museum of OOO for its long-awaited premiere. I think this is a joke. Initially, I read this as Odo, but I'm almost positive it's supposed to be O-O-O, or Oo, or something. I don't know, I don't get this, whatever it's supposed to be, but this name pops up a lot. I'll try and pronounce it in whatever way embarrasses me the least, and I've already failed to do that multiple times. Anyway, this uh, god causes entropy. Our damage and enemy damage is increased, which is uh, why it combos well with scars. Because if you have scars, it reduces incoming damage by one. Sometimes enemies will do only one damage. 
and it can't be reduced to zero, so in some ways you would be wasting that. But now, enemies will always do at least two damage, giving us our Scars effect any time we get hit. That's my logic, at least. It might be my downfall. So what is this? Plus two curses every mystery. Once per mystery, cure one curse. I think that's maybe the use effect or something? I don't know. We'll see it in action, that's for sure. It can't kill us too fast. We'll probably get through at least one or two mysteries before this thing takes us out. Uh, has it given us any curses yet? No! Interesting. And if we want curses, we can get them manually. Using... Where is it? In the forest, of course. This will give us curses. Which is the easiest way to get curses if you want to unlock Ayaka. And you do. Because she is an interesting new character. We'll stick with the monument because we might get really severely doomed. But we will have to be incredibly thrifty with health as well. So I'm going to get rid of the library and bring in the history club. Which is actually kind of a dangerous thing to do, but... Doom might be a resource that uh, we can spend more freely than other resources. We'll see. We got an empty bottle for free. It is kind of a shame that they patched this in because that means we won't be shopping the uh, cheap item with the dog, which sometimes can randomly be the blue gem. Which gives us less opportunities to discover the mystery of the blue gem. But that is so obtuse that I will leave it for you to figure it on your own. I highly recommend it because, one thing, it's pretty fun to try and figure it out, and another, it is really, really funny. It's probably the best ending that this game has. This game has a lot of good endings. Never seen this character before, so let's check out all of her costumes. I like this one solely for the name. His sweater implies some kind of backstory to it. We might learn something in the character-specific events that can randomly crop up. Perhaps we will. This might be a memento from a dead friend or something. From her friend group that she accidentally slaughtered in the ritual that we don't yet know anything about. This is a movie poster. Uh, all the times I've seen it, I never realized this is a schoolgirl holding an Uzi. Like, she could, she's got her hand on the trigger here, and then the, uh, the clip she's holding with her other hand. It looks weird in the one-bit style, but uh, it's a reference to a very specific movie poster from Japan. And into the action, we will be going... Ugh. We'll do the Wordless Ward mystery, because we haven't seen that yet, and it is new. And we'll also do the Abnormal Arms mystery. So as soon as I get both of those, we'll uh, get rolling. There's Abnormal Arms and Wordless Ward. Looks like this is what we're doing. Okay. I said we do it, and we're doing it. I specifically chose Timeline A once again, which is unfortunate because Abnormal Arms was changed very significantly in Timeline B. But it uh, deprives you of a key item, a literal key item, if you take Timeline B. And we sort of need that. Okay, here's our first two uh, curses. We got Brain Damage, minus two knowledge, slightly more Max Reason, and more uh, Doom. Speaking of, go to the History Club and spend some Doom. All combat moves deal extra damage and are faster, depending on the amount of curses you have. That is definitely what I'm buying. That sounds really good. And then I'm gonna go get some more curses. Yep. Immediately comboing into this character in a dangerous, practically suicidal way. What else? Uh, we can recover some stamina, we can get some spells, or some funds. What spells can we get? That'll be useful. 
because our health is very limited here. This one doesn't do anything harmful to us. So that's a good curse to get. Branded... Huh. I thought this was, uh... The one that gives you... Doom increase. When you... Cast more spells. But not the case. That's a different one. Minus 10 max reason, cancelling out our brain damage. Supposedly, we still have 14 max reason somehow. And screw it. We'll get some more funds as well, and holes. That is gonna tap out our stamina quickly. So let's uh, get to work. We've got a very powerful character, much more powerful than she should be. Now we can cast a spell for free. Let's see. Ignore the current event and instantly investigate a random other world location. That would have been useful if I had done this. Hmm. Yeah, we're not going to use this yet. Because this is actually perfect for the secret character unlock that I'm going for. And if I use it now, I won't be able to use it when I have the circumstances for that secret character unlock. So we gotta waste it. Let us dive right into the side quest to investigate the hospital twice. What are my stats? We got pretty good decks. We got bad luck, so do not set the trash can on fire. And we failed our decks anyway. Rolled a 10 plus 1. Oh well. And we gotta dive right back in. Uh, plus curse. Look at that. We got in's mouth look twice. <laughs> The thing that doesn't hurt us at all, we now have two times. Glorious. Giving us tremendous power. Like, what are the numbers on uh, our blood mania? Yeah, extra damage, faster moves. So, are we getting six extra damage per attack? Plus another one for the entropy? That would be something. That it does remind me that I need a weapon, though, and I have a lot of money to go get one. Uh, so... If we're a witch, might as well shop here. Although I do believe most of the items here are, like, knowledge weapons. Our knowledge is less good than our decks. Can't keep screwing around with, uh, re-rolling here because I have accrued quite a lot of doom. Glass Eye is a reference to the video game Night Cry. A horrible game, but if you know one thing about it, you know what the deal with the Glass Eye is. It's actually very cool. Uh, small chance of ignoring reason loss, that's good enough. And it takes up slot B, so we can keep on our medallion. Very good. We did the side quest, so let's just get on with the main quest. Uh, our charisma's good enough that we might be able to calm her down. We did! Plus four reason. Uh, she sniffs and smiles weakly. You feel like you prevented something awful. Always a good idea to prevent something awful. Also, raining blood, reference to Slayer. Another thing that is awful, unfortunately. Um, our stats are pretty much perfect, so let's just, uh, take a nice bath. Get additional doom out of it. But we couldn't have standed to, uh, gain anything from the other option. Yeah, I really feel like I'm playing with fire by not getting a weapon, so we'll buy a steak knife. Just in case. This is not going well. I should call it here, but... We got our steak knife. Now to just, uh... I'm actually gonna go 
to the monument and trade something for minus doom. That'll do. Minus one funds. Perfect choice. Feeling real worried about our doom at this point. This guy will bring our doom down, I believe. Yep, at the cost of three reason. Thank you, terrifying guy. So the entire rest of this mystery is just exploring the apartment over and over again. Uh, the museum started hanging up posters promoting the Greek art exhibition, unaware of the danger. The opening night may prove to be the last night for all of us. I thought two was coming, and you know the date. Plus three doom. But we did get experience by seeing that poster. Uh, once again, nothing to really gain. And only one stamina to lose. Here should be... Oh, I thought it would be the apartment stalker. But no, it's this guy. Surprisingly abysmal damage. To the point that I'm just gonna run away. I hate fighting this guy anyway. He's a ghost, so he can't use our knife. And apparently our increased damage doesn't work either. Now to wrap this mystery up. Everything leads to the boiler room. Where there happens to be... A long pipe with a hand at the end coming out. Smells rotten. Looks even worse. Uh, you almost fall out. Uh, dead pervert. Elongated limbs. Tiny key. That's what we came here for. Now the tiny key is supposed to be used to unlock a locker in uh, the school. Oh, that is some terrible news. So, we can't really recover our health between missions anymore. Just to show it off, we have bottled water. We take a bath. Gives us the option to use bottled water. It does nothing. We just keep the bottled water. And now we are in real dire straits. But what can we do? It's the hand we've been dealt. So, we've got our tiny key. We're supposed to use it in this mystery, which will take us inside the school. We can go to the locker room. We can open a specific locker and steal a gun from another student. Uh, yes, students in Japan bring guns to school. Apparently. Uh, we don't want to do that, though. Because for some reason, this tiny key that was in a dead pervert's mouth has many other uses. Let us just go straight into the Worthless Ward and get more <laughs> terrifying curses. We got branded. This is the same one. Let's see. Did we get traumatized again? Yeah, we got double branded. More and more doom. So much doom. And suicidal. Losing stamina every time we lose reason. Oh, we get a free removal. Thanks to our... medallion. Which means I may have wasted one of them. I'm going to... Near the end of the mystery, I'm going to remove holes. Everyone remind me to do that. Okay, chat. This is not recorded live. I'm done for. I ever forget, like, everything that I tell myself to bring up later in the video. It bothers me. Hopefully it doesn't bother the viewers as badly. Got a nervous nurse. Our friend is being prepped for surgery. Now we go to corridor A. It immediately brings up an event. Uh, walk through the hospital corridor. Stop by an older man with a cast on his leg. Let's help him out. Up, oh, we've got bad decks though. You struggle to help the man, but you both fall down the stairs. The man's cast breaks, and you scream. Underneath the cast, there's a seething sore, frothing with green bubbles. The man smiles. His smile, way too wide for his face. He likes that we injured him horribly, when he was already horribly injured. 
Now, the nurse told us to take an elevator. But we don't want to do that. We already did that during the event. So we just want to go to the patient room. This is our friend. Lying on the bed. Still sleeping after the surgery. Their face is almost completely covered in bandages. You sit on what must be the most uncomfortable chair in the world, thinking how pointless it is to wait here. Having nothing else to do, you decide to go and buy something to drink from the vending machine. We haven't really raised their spirits any. We can donate blood. Seems like a bad idea, though. So we'll just lose one reason instead. Uh, resting isn't the worst idea. Yep, shopping was the worst idea, though. Whoops, did not mean to do that. Uh, since we're here, I guess we'll get this. Yeah, that's pretty good. And we got the funds for it. Same deal. Actually, we can rob the doctor while we're here. But just in case, we won't do that yet. We got two nurses with sharp knives. So we're kind of... I don't believe it is possible to attack both of them in the same turn. So as a result, we are going to take damage from one of these. And the reason one, we have slightly more reason to lose. So we will try and kill the stamina nurse first. The anomaly attendant. You've got a lot of damage, but fairly poor chance to hit. Let's see. It's not possible to kill her outright. Might be if we throw this at her. More damage, so 13 left. Yeah, if we land this twice, she is done for. But first, we'll uh, get a little more info on them, and then murder one of them outright. That sounds like fun. Okay. No special skill, weak against fire. Hmm. For some reason, we didn't take any reason damage. Weird. Uh, University-funded hospital was too big for Shiokawa. Afraid of losing their jobs, they started supplying their own patients. They're gonna injure us and then heal us afterwards. That's nice of them. Maybe that's why we took no damage from that attack. Uh, she has much lower HP than her stabby friend. So we could actually take her out just like this. And we have so many moves. We're very, very fast, thanks to all of our curses. Yeah, we got a level up. And another steak knife. Wish we could dual wield, but it's not that kind of game. Uh, unique things that I've never seen, because I've never played this character before. Doom Effigy, completing a mystery lowers extra doom, dependent on the amount of curses you have. That is perfect for my current predicament of being at 50% doom on the second mystery. Bonus to all stats. Um, I gotta go with the minus doom first, unfortunately. This'll work. And back to our friend. In their convalescence. Your friend woke up earlier today. You spent some time talking about school and rel recent events, but still can't shake the feeling something seems off. Finally, they go to sleep. You decide to take a walk and stretch your legs. Investigating an alley. Turned out not to be a good idea. We are gonna have to get stabby in this alley. So we need three of these to land. Do we have... Yeah, we don't have enough uh, speed to guarantee three hits. Maybe taking a risk with some of these. Hope we have the stamina to spare. Won't be too run-ending if this goes awry. And it didn't. 
so I'm glad I took that risk. Next day, on your way home, you are stopped by your friend's mother. She hands you a package for her child. You promise to hand it over tonight. We shouldn't open it now. I want to open it, but it legitimately will not let us. We have to deliver this thing. If only there were some way to not deliver it, we might get an alternate ending. Paranoid patient. Do we have enough charisma to do, uh, talk her down? No. She beat us up. Back to our friend. Their mom asks us to deliver this package. They just stare. Creepy. Uh. Yep, yeah, scary paintings. No matter what character we play as, we're almost always creeped out by paintings every time we see them. Right back into it. We have no choice but to assume the worst here. Which does nothing. And back to our friend. They just keep staring. They've been staring for two days now. Did I tell you you're really beautiful, they ask, twisting their swollen lips in a smile. Don't go yet. Spiral eyeballs somehow. No sclera. Just all Iris. Okay, someone's trying to rob us, but we had zero funds to begin with. They stole an empty wallet. Uh, the next day passes without any incidents, and before you know, another evening is coming. With an increased reluctance, you head towards the hospital. Our brand is causing quite a bit of doom for us. Yeah, we're gonna have to... Start curing these things. But for now... Oh, our threat level's up. Nothing we can do about that during the mystery, unfortunately. We'll just have to avoid the hospital in the future. And head back to see our friend. Final phase of my surgery is tomorrow. I just can't wait to show you the results. You can't help but shudder thinking about the final day. Um, if we don't ruin the calm moment, we'll get some reason back, which we could use. I want to say this one reduces doom? No, increases experience. So now, we do need to trade some doom for some health. But it's fine. It's, uh, the last night. So, I mean, we're done here. The worst is over. We can brush off our hands after a job well done. I mean, all the lights in the hospital go out. Yeah, we got a bit of a bad feeling. But we decide to check on our friend one last time and get the hell out of here. I mean, something could be happening to them. They could be in danger. We should help them out real quick, because they've been such a good friend so far. You're shocked to find an empty bed. Oh, we're too late. The mystery darkness creatures got them. The parcel you've delivered it lies unwrapped on the nightstand, ignoring the faint footsteps. Uh, at the corridor? Hm. You take a peek. Inside, there's a torn price tag for a butcher's knife. The footsteps are getting louder. <laughs> so our friend's mom bought our friend a butcher knife with the price tag still on. <laughs> And our friend was conscientious, conscientious enough to remove the tag. He's not a fashionable murderer in training. I said he. They've used uh, they pronouns so far. And that is because this creature that we are about to meet is, uh, well, we'll see in a second. Do you like what I did with my face? I've always admired you, you know, even when you acted like you don't know me at all. I think the result is perfect. 
too perfect, in fact, for two people to share the same face. Your friend raises the butcher knife you involuntarily brought. Our friend has become us. And we have become not us by putting on a mask, so, I mean, really, you can, you can have it. But no, they want us to not be able to take off the mask and reclaim our old life, which they will now be stealing, usurping from us. And uh, yeah, this is why they have they them pronoun pronouns, because no matter which character you bring in, they will steal that character's face. So if you come in with a guy, it'll be a guy in the end. And if you come in as the witch, it'll be the witch in the end. Now what she didn't count on is that we are ready to get real, real stabby. Uh, I'm gonna start by throwing a steak knife at her. Five damage. Uh, we're still just slightly out of one hit kill range though. So I will brace for impact, get us into one hit kill range, and then uh, whoops. No, no. Interesting, we're at 203 out of 200. I thought they patched this out, where you could sometimes go above the, the action cap, but uh, they haven't. So we'll see if this works to our advantage. Sometimes it is glitched and it will cancel some of your actions. But if not, we're in a good spot. Okay, now we just need to do nine more, and the day will be saved. And that's nine in my book. We've defeated Witch. The person who tried to steal your life now lies on the hospital floor, dead. Mad, you keep smashing their face in until only a gory mess remains. When you come back to your senses, you stumble out of the hospital room and onto the dark corridor. The doors in other rooms, the doors to other rooms, slowly begin to open, and you are reminded about what the crazed friend told the other patients about you. I don't remember learning anything about that. Out of every room reaches a bandaged head of a patient. Their bruised face is eerily similar. They all want to meet you. So the entire hospital ward stole our face. <laughs> but our friend didn't want to kill all of them for some reason. Just us, because our face was the most perfect rendition of itself. And I forgot to cure one of my status effects. Let's try this. It's probably too late, though. But holes causes us to lose two stamina at the end of every mystery. But we're rid of it now. Uh, the dog quit his job. That's unfortunate. But we didn't really need him. We got a steak knife. Still can't take a bath. And our doom is still surprisingly high. Wonder how much doom it removed at the end of that mystery. Because it clearly wasn't enough. Oh yeah, the Knight Errant uh, thing that we had last time, our backstory last time. If we failed to get an A rank, all it did was increase our doom by 6%. Which, as severe punishments go, that is not that bad. It was also a surprisingly lazy backstory. Almost all the backstories have one benefit and one downside. The Knight Errant just only had downsides. So we've got the Peculiar Painting. The Evolving Eels and the School Scissors. I'm trying to get something from the school, so... Let's dive into the school. We got Hunger. Which is just minus one Charisma. No big deal. And... Did we get a third? In Smith look? We got something. Oh, we got Holes back. We'll keep it for now and forget to remove it at the end of the mystery once again. Oh well. Uh, another boy from your school has disappeared. Rumor has it, a terrible woman has returned from the grave. A woman with the widest smile. And the sharpest scissors. 
Uh, you knew your friend was up to something when he left his notebook full of cryptic notes. I can send her back where she belongs, he claimed. After he disappeared too, you decided to study the notebook for clues. It details a ritual that can stop the wicked woman once and for all. What's the worst thing that could happen? We're gonna find out. But first, what's my inventory look like? Pretty good. We're gonna head to the lockers. So this right here is what the tiny key is for. We're not gonna use it on that locker. Um, this locker is a trap. You open it, you take one reason damage because there's scary teeth and bones and writhing in there. But the other locker is fully open and we can steal a wooden bat out of there and the rest don't exist. But we would get a hunting rifle if we used the tiny key on that locker. We can get something better if we don't use it there. So there's rumors of a tall woman with scissors. We saw it in the intro. We need a holy candle and we need some chalk to draw this symbol. The sigil will weaken the demon for a while. Uh, Mero is acting strange. Need to talk to her after class. I hope she didn't attempt the ritual herself. I've hidden the candles in one of the classrooms. Tomorrow I will try to perform the ritual. So we got like a box with like a wiggly line and with a circle over it. All we can do now is explore. We're hoping to explore... Ooh! No, this is too early. Yeah, this is useless. Let's try to resist. There we go. That would have taken us to the other world. We are not yet ready to go to the other world, unfortunately. We did not find any items here in the classroom. So we just gotta move on. We find Ritsuko-chan. She was the most promising athlete in the school. When she suddenly disappeared, the case was quickly closed without any suspects. Today, she has finally dug herself out. Hello again, Ritsuko-chan. Uh, we just need to deal 15 damage. We can do so many stabs. It's incredible. She is so dead. Didn't stand a chance. Death has not served her well. Uh, we found the Blessed Chalk. Convenient. Um, oh, well, we can't use it yet. Oh, we haven't found it yet. It seems it was left on the roof. We, all we found was an additional page. Look at that. It helps to actually pay attention. We can peek outside. What's out here? Scary face. We can't do it again. But fortunately, it does not affect our stats to get that little jump scare. And there are multiple different faces that you can find. So try that out every time you come through here. That's just the developers showing off their incredible art skills. Because that jump scare serves no other purpose. Uh, hmm. Once again, they are trying to suck us into the other world. We are not ready for the other world. Leave me alone, Goizo. Instead of a clear blue sky, you see the bloated corpse of a long forgotten deity looming over the school's roof. The barrier between worlds is coming apart. You must hurry or risk being noticed by whatever other eldritch horrors lurk here. Hurrying... We got plus 10 experience, nice. You succeed in grabbing the backpack and return to the staircase, leading back to our world. Not sure why we went on the roof. Oh, to get the chalk. Again, paying attention. Let us increase the hell out of all of our stats. And also bump up our decks. To 11. Turned it up to 11. In... Uh... Spinal Tap terminology. Oh, there's our box. There we go. 
And there's the right symbol. We are ready to go. Once we get the holy candles. They're not in the schoolyard. This is what we're looking for. This option will be blacked out unless we have the tiny key. For some reason, the dead pervert had this key, which goes to a locker in the school. But for some reason, the same key goes to the lock to the trophy case, which for some reason contains a goblet, which is constantly cold to the touch. It looks ancient. What was it doing in the school? We know it's important. Using a key you find, you open the trophy case and take an old, take an odd golden goblet without a plaque. For some reason, if you break the glass, you cannot take the goblet. You have to use that key. Now we get to really roll the dice and use our void spell. I really wish we had gotten this goblet sooner. Off to the void. Um, we're not in the middle of a encounter yet, so we can't use that. But as soon as we get into an encounter, right about here. Oh, this is the void. Look at that for free. Let's just hop in. This school really wants to take us to the outer world. This is ridiculous. I've never seen so many attempts to pull us into the outer world. Now we got not the correct one. This is highly RNG, the thing that I'm going for here. Very, very random. So we need to go to a specific outer world location, and this is not it. So we got Frostbite. Look at this, we've gone off the map with uh, all the various curses we have. Truly absurd. I love it. Just in case I forget, we'll real quick get rid of the holes, just so there's no chance that I, you know, make uh, the same mistake and lose more stamina from it when it could have been prevented. Hmm. Looks like we have another curse removal built up. Let's try and use it. We don't need our strength. It's plenty high enough. That does nothing, so... Hey, we were able to get rid of one of those. Can I get rid of another? No. So we had one stacked up from the one mystery where I forgot to use my curse removal. Interesting, that's a good mechanic. That's surprisingly user-friendly. I would expect from this game because it's so difficult to just make that go to waste if you forget to use it. But not the case. Uh, everything's ready for the ritual. Let us perform it. Here comes someone trying to interrupt it. Someone loud and irritating. Coming. Hold your horses, you three-faced woman. A uh, writhing amorphous mass slowly takes shape. Looked like she was already taking shape when she was knocking on the door. Soon it becomes a tall woman-like creature with three faces, all connected by a wide smile. Now it is your chance to fight and defeat this horror. It is also your only chance. I think we got this. But if not, she does minus two to all. So... We're down to five damage because I cured too many curses, I guess. Our chance to hit is very good. And we've got a wooden bat to throw. Can you stand up to the power of a wooden bat? Now we need to do, I mean, 20, technically. If we can get three of these landed, and we certainly can, we will be all set. Nice and easy. We are so absurdly overpowered. This character is a little extreme, and so was uh, Tojiaki, for that matter. Ancient horror lies dead on the classroom floor, slowly dissolving into nothingness. 
You find your friend, gravely wounded but alive. You help him and you limp away from the school as the police sirens get louder. I guess because we were trespassing. Says this woman is gone for good, or is it? You shudder, knowing the urban legend will inspire another kid in another city to try and summon the eldritch being. That's fine, though. We're hanging on by a thread. All of our things are sticking right around the middle because of the middling little bits of uh, resources we recover at the end of each mystery. So far, they happen to be just barely enough to keep us alive at the end of each mystery. So we're basically in stasis. Three mysteries in. We're pretty good. We're further than halfway. We might make it through. So we got the evolving eels. That one might have been good to get sooner. But since we didn't get it sooner, let's get it now. Reunite with our constant companion, Kana. Kana? Yeah, I think I like to pronounce it Kana. Everyone has seen this mystery many, many times. I've already showed it off once. And if you know anything about this game, you know this mystery. It is, uh, it has a certain eye-popping resolution. Which, if you're not ready for it, it will catch you pretty off guard, but... Ah, something evil showed up. That could be bad. It probably won't be, but if we get very unlucky, we'll get a lot of something evil attacks. I should have voided that. Just gotten the hell out of there. I knew that was gonna happen. Oh well. Hopefully we won't see something evil, because that would end this run outright. We're far enough in that it is unlikely. Uh, we can pretty much only lose stats here, so bring on the void. Lost in time and space, you drift in nothingness until something pulls you towards the light. We got it. The Upper Kingdom is where we wanted to go. We wanted to see the Sphinx. Overlooking the giant corpses of the Forgotten Beasts. With no priest to harvest it, their blood is slowly flowing, slowly flooding the valley. We have a goblet to fill with the blood pouring out of the Sphinx's mouth. We will fill the goblet with blood and increase our doom in doing so. You fill a container with the sacred blood. Bringing it back to your reality is surely a corruption of all rights. And won't do you any good. But we're doing it anyway. The neighbor's office at school was empty. You did find a few jars, all filled with weird, you like fish. <laughs> From the horrifying to the mundane. Now, we need only to a lock of human hair. That's weird. I guess the text here is glitched for some reason. Not our problem. We are going to drink the ancient beast's blood. We got a new achievement and recovered six reason and stamina. Incredible. The blood drunk from the goblet is surprisingly cold and smooth. That unlocks the final character. That character came in a patch over a year ago, and I've not been able to get that achievement this entire time, despite numerous attempts. That also means next time I play through, I could use Timeline B and show off alternate endings that I could not show off in the other videos. Neat. So even if this run does go to hell, which is it's now slightly less likely to do so, we will be able to accomplish something. Do something entirely different in the next run. So... I don't think there's any reason to do the side quest here. Except, uh... It changes what you receive at the end of the run. And only very slightly at that. Um, I am gonna go see the monument. What does the monument want? 
Minus one funds. We don't have any funds. Let's... Oh. Weird. The monument just went away. Hmm. We've angered the outer deity. Interesting. I've only had the monument for a very short period of time, so I don't fully know how it works. And I just learned something. Always bring funds. If you're gonna visit the guy. He's a bit of a mooch. That's fine. Our stats are very good. Uh, something evil's getting closer. Ransack room of your recently deceased friend, you discover a half-finished painting. Of a face hidden in the shadow. Not good at all. Our something evil meter has gone up by one. Each time it goes up, it can randomly... It increases the random chance that something evil will show up and try to kill us. We don't have any money, so we have to get the cheapest one. And thanks to our very, very high dexterity, <laughs> we uh, got plus five experience. I guess we dexterously drank whatever living thing was in there trying to kill us. Without realizing it. Now we're getting real close to a level up. Keep investigating those apartments with Kana. Mr. Ooo, your neighbor is a horror manga artist. You know, it will cost us our level up, but I am going to take that so that we can have funds and the guy won't come and try to steal our blood in exchange for money. I'm surprised he didn't show up. Surprised pleasantly. Uh, we don't have core strength. We haven't had any character-specific events, that's odd. But anyway, let's help the fisherman. Strength check success. Now we're right back near where we were. And Khan is gone. So... We're just gonna have to go look for her. By which I mean, just go to school and forget we ever knew her. Uh, so here's the vampire who is in love with us. We've got our full damage back. Very high chance to hit. We do need to land a lot of these though. Oh, we need to land three. This is weird. It won't let me uh, add any more things. Let's see, can we... Let's clear them out. Yeah, once again, won't let me add any more stuff. I guess there's a cap on how many moves you can add to your bar? That's news to me. Whatever. Let's... It's a shame that this happened during the one section where Kana's gone. Because we could have used her damage reduction. But instead... Eh, we've got... Bull Brace. Play it safe. We've got the time to spare, surprisingly. There. Slightly over 200 points gonna be a lot of damage. We'll take one at most. She has one left. Take her out and get an occult diary from it, which I believe gets us more experience. No, minus three doom. Perfect. Uh, before we save Kana, let's uh, look at these useless things that we don't need. We'll increase our dexterity so we do even more ridiculous amounts of damage. off the, the box again. We'll get rid of Branded. Yeah, I don't think these stack, so just 
give us as many suicidals as we can get. I don't like the sound of saying that, but it is a good gameplay strategy. I believe, yeah, that was all of our cures for the moment. Let us rescue Kana. What does this do? Minus two strength. Good. And we get the reason to spare, so we can save Kana. Come on out, friends. Get out of my friend's brain. You're only supposed to eat corpses, you little rascals. She's plenty alive, thanks to our quick thinking. But she might die of blood loss. We know she won't, though. We're gonna head back to the hospital and once again wait for a friend. But this one we know we can trust because her eyes gouged out. The other friend had a terrifying abyss eye, which means untrustworthy. And we save the day at the cost of a whole lot of reason. Uh, roads are closed. Our second to last town status effect. We're doing pretty good though. Only one mystery left. And it takes place entirely in a mansion. Yeah, I don't think I have anything else to take care of. Let's just hop right into it. Get this thing hopefully wrapped up. And this also means that something evil will not be able to uh, increase during this entire mystery, which means we have evaded it. Won't have to worry about that anymore. We're gonna go see our favorite painter who cordially invited us to his mansion. And then does not greet us at the gate. Leaving us to wander the grounds with our friend Kana aimlessly. We could go to the other world again. I have spent enough time there. I wonder what this does. Force ourselves into hiding. Spot an old fallen tree and jump behind it. Still feeling the unnatural light on your skin? Soon things calm down, you're safe. Hmm. I wonder what... that was probably a curse that gave us the ability to do that? Because I don't remember seeing that option before. Interesting. While walking through the empty mansion, you can hear something rustling in the bushes behind the building. To the bushes we go. We don't have the Ryoko. So, I guess we'll... I think this is a charisma check? Luck check, of course. Our luck is terrible. It's a corpse someone has propped up. Adds to our doom. Our doom is still very high. But we made a new friend. We know her. It is... Aimee. The curator for Ichiro-san. She's obsessed with these rocks that have ritualistic markings. So we can go explore over here, head back into the mansion, or stick by Aimee's side. We are going to stick by Aimee's side. We did see a previous playthrough where, uh, Things didn't turn out so well when we didn't do that. So, Cornucopia. Suddenly, the Onyx Medallion begins to shake violently. You try to stop it by pressing it hard to your chest, and it burns your skin. You yell in pain, catching the attention of a man standing nearby. He takes a step towards you and grabs your hand, clearly trying to help. Help just like your friends tried to. Before you can say anything, the man explodes into a cornucopia of blood and gore. The medallion has claimed another victim. I feel like searching the remains is going to uh, damage our reason, which is not doing so hot. Fleeing could mean anything. You know, we've been a witch for a long time. We saw all of our friends explode. Let's 
try and, uh, you know, make the most of this situation and search the remains. We got more curses. <laughs> Being guided by the medallion's strange powers, you stick your hand into the pile of steaming flesh. The meat fuses with your skin and slowly gets absorbed. Plus two stamina, plus five experience. And another curse. I can't even keep track of what all of our curses are at this point. We can't even see our reason anymore. If we are on this screen, it's gonna cover our face entirely. This is absurd. But most of these aren't doing anything, so I don't need to cure them. What is traumatized? We are severely traumatized, I'll grant you that. Uh, but we've got two brain damages. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna leave them. Strategically, though, the best thing to do is just not worry about our curses. Just keep stacking them up. This medallion is doing us a lot of favors. So long as no one else ever touches it. Sticking with Aimee. Uh, the room layout of this place doesn't make any sense. You've been trying to leave this mansion, but each door leads to the same musty hallway. You start to panic, trying to find a solution. Luck check failure. Of course. Since this is the uh, final mystery of our little adventure, I should point out that one of the mysteries we skipped was the uh, terror TV channel thing. The easy one that's new that you can always do as an alternative to one of the actually good mysteries. But uh, a YouTube commenter told me that that mystery, when you play it as this character, breaks the Onyx Medallion, or perhaps your uh, your perks here, your character-specific perks, which uh, severely limits your character's power. But that uh, glitch was patched out. So, we don't have to worry about it, but that is another odd curiosity of this one person development team and the many, many glitches that it, the person has had to work with over their years developing it. Uh, there's a boarded up building. Again, we're gonna stick with Aimee. But I don't know what happens if you, like, go to the work shed. Last time we went there, we got a flashlight, but if you go there with a flashlight, something else will happen. Not sure what it is. Probably unlock something in the painting studio. There's a bunch of weird crap you can do in this mystery that I have not explored yet. But for now, we're sticking with Aimee. Just playing it safe. Taking a bath. Plus one reason. <laughs> Countless paintings still hanged on the walls of the mansion. All of them show alien landscapes in Ichiro-san's famous style. What are these burnt notes? Oh, that's from another mystery. Throw them in storage. And stick with Aimee. Head to that boarded up building. Pillar of Flame. A sudden blast of heat grabs your attention. An older man standing next to you screams in pain as he's engulfed in fire from seemingly nowhere. As other people start to panic and help the burn victim, you spot a hooded woman standing in the distance. When she sees you, she starts to run. You can't shake off the feeling that you were the target of this supernatural attack. So it is not spontaneous human combustion. Every random dude we pass on the street explodes in some way or another. <laughs> we definitely have bad luck. But, uh, let's chase our fellow witch. The hooded woman disappears behind a corner, and when you get there, she's gone. Already mixed in with a crowd. In a nearby dumpster, you find the sulfur stinking hoodie and an envelope containing your photo, plus a curious incantation. The fire spell. I wonder if that event is scripted to give you this specific spell, because that would make sense. Finally, in one of the you find a key in one of the desk drawers. You head towards the private rooms, hoping to find the painter himself. Oh, well, Aimee's already there. Let's meet her. She thanks us for staying with her. 
In the middle of a room, you see a man tied to a chair. You rush in to help. When you remove his gag, though, the man starts shouting curses and ancient prophecies. You fall on the floor, your mind flooded with unspeakable images as the man slowly stands up, completely ignoring the chair he was seemingly tied to. So this is not Ichiro-san. Despite the fact that we're going to meet Ichiro-san in his private quarters. This is a cult member who lives with Ichiro-san, apparently. We are practically guaranteed to hit him. With- look at this! We get so many attacks, this is incredible. I've never had a character this powerful before. And I've had characters with, like, very high dexterity and the katana from the other world. And they still could not do this. This is absurd. So let's murder this guy. And get a curious statuette out of the deal. Plus one knowledge, so long as we just keep it in our inventory, we don't even have to equip it. We don't need knowledge. But we've got it. There's Ichiro-san, not spattered with blood. Wonderful. You must grab Aimi, who almost faints at the sight of the room you both enter. Every visible surface is covered in obscene paintings and grotesque monster faces. Ichiro-san sits alone in front of an empty canvas. Ichiro-san smiles when he notices you two. Ah, my biggest fan and Miss Aimi is here. He stands up and comes closer, looking at you from behind his dark glasses. I feel like this has to be a caricature of someone. I mean, he's an artist, and uh, the developer of this game is a huge, obsessive fan of numerous artist types. Eccentric weirdos who probably live in obscure mansions and perform horrifying rituals. Uh, would you please be kind and wait for- wait at the foyer? I need Miss Aimee to help me with the latest painting. Aimee looks at you surprised, but doesn't say anything. She's a bit of a non-entity, this Aimee. So we should go to the foyer. Who do we trust? Aimee, or the guy who is acting very strange and suspicious? Let us stick with Aimee. Uh, Twisted Reflection. More Doom. We've got a lot of Doom. 91%. No, you can't leave Aimee with that creepy man, no matter how famous he is. You got it all spattered with blood, though. Something happened. You quickly go back to the room and gasp. Ichiro-san prepares to stab unconscious Aimee. Ichiro-san looks at you and smiles. You can't stop my work now. Why did he even invite us here? just to foil his plans. It's a freaking Scooby-Doo villain, this guy. And we are the meddling kid. Well, me and Kana, meddling kids. The painted monster reaches from the canvas and grabs surprised Ichiro-san by his neck. No, this was not supposed to happen. So his painting itself is murdering him. And I said in the other ending that I was hoping to actually see the painting, but I figured it would be too much work for the developer of this game. Apparently it's not. They actually did go and draw it. Of course, they wrote that there were many, many paintings sliding the entire mansion. We only get to see the one, but it is pretty cool looking. 80% uh, chance to hit, but look at how many attacks we get. I wish we could get, get so many more. We could easily have double this many. We'll, uh, brace. Just to be safe. And then... Get a million attacks. Save this sequence so I don't have to click several times next time. We missed a lot of attacks there. That sucks. But we'll do it again. And this time, hit most of the attacks instantly tear it apart, which stands to reason. We've got a steak knife, and it is a canvas. But it is infused with otherworldly demon powers. You've managed to finally defeat the horrible eldritch being and destroy the canvas it was it used as portal. Feeling it won't stop you? No, feeling it won't stop it, you and Aimee both take your time and burn every painting in the mansion. Hopefully Ichiro-san's legacy will soon be forgotten our favorite artist, wiped from the history books because 
He was a portal to an evil world. We only got minus three doom. That is surprising. Does this ability not work? Because we've got a lot of curses. We should lower, like, so much doom. Look at all the doom we should be lowering. But no, just three. Oh well. Arcane Storm. Which, reason cost of spells increased by one. No new unique things to worry about. So, knowledge, luck, perception, all useless to us. Just get more decks. Continue to be a whirling dervish of steak knife murder. Which, by the way, has weird red stains on it. You can only hope that the red stains are from steak. Click the last key. Do nothing else. I wonder if this has been helping us out. We haven't taken very much damage at all, so perhaps not. But this has been a nice clean run. Maybe I should bump it up to hard difficulty. I've clearly mastered normal difficulty. If I manage to die now, that would be hilarious. Make me eat those words. We can't afford to rest because our doom is really bad. But we probably don't need to because we are near max. Our max stamina is at like 11 at this point. We've got so many curses. Climbing the winding staircase, we meet Takashi-san, the ultimate opportunist who is not long for this world, because we have a 105% chance to hit him all these times. Feel bad for the guy. He's always pathetic, but this is ridiculous. This run just went out of control. Imagine how bad this would be if I had gotten the katana from one of those outer world visits, because that is a dex-based weapon. And it has much, much, much higher stats than the steak knife. As you can imagine. Um, who was the second enemy we fought? I always forget this one. Anomaly Attendant was the first, I'm pretty sure. You, question mark. I believe that is uh, the boss to the Wardless Ward mystery. I think it was Twisted Corpse. Wrong answer. I get this wrong every time. Now I'm dangerously close to death. Yeah, I think this run might be over, unfortunately. Because I got that answer wrong. Nothing at all I can do to bring my doom down. Tragic. 99%. Ugh, 100%. Uh, maybe this will bring our doom down if we get it right. I doubt it, though. Uh, it was. The Orless Ward. Plus 10 experience. End of game. <laughs> when you arrive at the museum, the firefighters are already struggling to contain the spreading fire. You manage to slip through the police and run inside. You make your way inside the exhibition hall as your skin gets charred. Last thing you see is a Thotu, finally breaking free from its marble casket. Game over. We did still get one very important and very difficult achievement. I'll take it. And we got a very nice exhibition of this character. Just remember, remember in the future, bring money to the monument. If I had dropped a dollar in the monument, I would still be alive and I would have won this very easily. So, uh, there you go. Another playthrough, technically successful. Successful by my standards. I'm satisfied. And so is Ithotu. We are both malignant outer gods working against poor Ayaka.